Right, hello there everyone, welcome back to James Redman TV, brought to you with the main man, that is Shai TV as well, uh, energy, energy, full stop. I've got, energy. No <laughs> I've got energy. <laughs> I've, I've got I've got, all, I've got all right energy, Shai, I, I, I feel like, yeah. you know, a show with you, one of the more That's United... It. I love that. I love that. Sensible United fans, I'll take it, I'll take it. Yeah, Go on, yeah, yeah. you look like you've got something to say to me. No, I was, I was going to say you've got you've got energy in the Champions League. I, there's some there's some you know kind of you know a little bit there. You're doing well in the Champions League. It's just that the Premier League is just not not your cup of tea. You know what I mean? It, it yeah, feels like yeah, the yeah. old days. You know, it feels like the old days where Liverpool was so good in the Champions League, and in the Premier League they were just shite. And it feels like it's that story might be coming back. But listen, I don't want to speak too much right now. But how are you though? How are you? Everything all good apart from Liverpool. Also, do you think that we're going to win the Champions League? I, I generally think, yeah, I don't think you're gonna win it, but I generally think if there's we'll gonna be well. a team, you've done it, you've done it what seven, six times. There's nobody yeah, can say times. to me that Liverpool won't do it. You know what I mean? Nobody, it's, the, the history's there. You've won it six times. Anfield pedigree, you know. I I call it heritage, innit? You know, you know when we have a mm. laugh with Big Steve and that. I always say heritage. <laughs> Liverpool yeah. have got that heritage. You know what I mean? I can't dispute that. Same with Real Madrid. So listen, if you get a favorable draw, last last year you had what Villarreal. Um, was it Sevilla? No, not Sevilla, Benfica. So you had a favourable yeah. draw going up to it. So who knows, man? It's all about the draw, isn't it? If you could get favourable draws, you just never know where the, the win can, can take you. So No, t tell me. There does, there does seem to be a different pedigree in, in the European games at the moment in comparison. Now, I don't know if it's the atmosphere. I don't know if it's because it's a different competition. So different mentality. I just, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't have a clue what it is. What do you think it is that correlates the inconsistency for Liverpool at the moment, because I'm trying to... Yeah. So, a bit after the Ajax game and after the Rangers game, I saw it as a chance, right, we can build on this now and we can go and get yeah. some results and get a string of wins together. But now, I said going into the Napoli game, this game means absolutely nothing to me because we weren't going to beat yeah, them 4-0, yeah, yeah. so we're going to finish second regardless what happens. Regardless, yeah. And then, on top of that as well, even though, like, you know, it was a big game, Napoli, they've done well. It just yeah. doesn't mean... Just because you beat Napoli doesn't mean you're going to go and win the next game in the league. Just because you beat course, City yeah, yeah, doesn't mean you're going to go... And it, you, you, I hate to compare it to Man United star fall as well, but at times, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had a very similar thing when he was getting an odd result against City and whatnot, and mm. then he just couldn't correlate that into a consistent basis on more yeah. than one occasion. So, do you see similarities there? And then, if so, are you on the same side as me that you're still a little bit shaky on whether mm. Liverpool can turn it round sometimes. Yeah. You know what it is? With, with the, with, you've had a little bit of um, good form in the Champions League because the intensity of the Premier League, like Nottingham Forest are going to relentlessly put pressure on you. Like mm. Leeds are going to do that. Like Napoli will have their moments where they sit back. Ajax will have their moments where they're like, you know what? It's European football. It's not this. You don't really kind of necessarily will go at it every single time. It's very, very tactical. It's very, very kind of a chess game. I think in the Premier League, I think Liverpool have took it a little bit for granted. I think the players are not suited now, as in Fabinho, these lot. In the Champions League, Fabinho's doing all right because it's kind of like the, 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 the momentum and the, and the tempo's quite slow. But I feel like with the with the, cha with the Champions League, and sorry, in the Premier League, Liverpool have just not grasped that and they've not had that same intensity that we all know Liverpool have. For so many years, Liverpool, one thing you can see with, uh, with the Jurgen Klopp team is energy, high intensity, high pressing. You've got Trent and Robertson fullback roles. You know what you're going to get with Liverpool and the drop-off has been absolutely crazy. And I'll be honest with you, and this is not even banner aside, I just don't think Liverpool will get that this season. I think there's so many problems at the football club. Obviously, we don't know what you're going to spend in, in January. That's remains to be seen. But in terms of your players you've got now, I don't think they can have the level of consistency. Fabinho, Henderson, Thiago, they will, I don't think they can conjure that and then expect the others at the top to kind of go down. I don't think, OK, Man United might have certain results going their favour, but it won't be a huge drop-off where Liverpool just keep getting good and the rest of them, you know, kind of fall to, to, to kind of like below, below standard. So... I just think Liverpool have got a lot to do in a short space of time and whether they can get transfers in remains to be seen. If not, you're going to have a yo-yo performances every time. You win one, James Redman thinks that Liverpool are back and then all of a sudden, it's like, you know what, bloody hell, Leeds, Leeds have just come out of nowhere and just won at home for the first time in, in God knows on the, on the Van Dyke. You know what I mean? So, it's mad, you know, it's mad. I, I, I am on the same page as you. 
I don't see consistency improving anytime soon. From the sounds of it, let me know if yeah. I misheard you. But it sounds like that you're saying plays like Fabinho are, are maybe past their best and yeah. maybe Liverpool need to look at alternative things. And, and I said the same thing. I was like, look at what Real Madrid... I, okay, I get we're not Real Madrid. We're not Man City. Mm. We can't compete with them financially and whatever have you. Mm. Right, fine. But one thing that Liverpool can do is at least look at the model in the way that they're not only bringing in players, which we've been praised for, but when you mm. let players go. And when you see Real Madrid getting Camavinga, Tushimani, players that, especially Tushimani, that we tried to get, just couldn't get it over the yeah. line, but still accommodating the team right now while Modric and Cruz are on the way out. When you're bringing those players in and you're letting Casemiro go before he's even... like, Because Casemiro's not washed. I, I always said when he came back to the Premier League, I questioned if he was a Ten Hag signing. And I will yeah. always question that no matter how good he does. I will yeah. always question that. But mm. based on the actual player, boss player, and Real Madrid still let him go and they're still yeah. winning games of footy. Because Respect, it's that yeah, model. Yeah. It's that model. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know what? You're right. I think the, 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 the Real Madrid... T to be fair, I've always had a plan, even with, you know, certain players like Marcelo, you know, you're looking at, they've got Ferland Mendy. They always know yeah. when certain players are coming towards their end and then they kind of like, you know... But they'll um, let the young player integrate I into know. the team. So look at City, exactly. so they bring in Rodri and they let Fernandinho go. So this is the only thing, Saeed, because I've been the negative Liverpool fan this season. That's be I'm heel Redmond, basically, Saeed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm heel but Redmond. But it's the truth, though. I feel like I'm the truth everyone though. off. It, it, does, it, it does, and and it hurt United fans when I was telling you how shit you was. It's just Liverpool fans are the same. If you say something wrong about their baby, it's 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 not good. It's not ideal for back the club. Back the club. It, back do you know? Club, do you know? You, know you do. Yeah, but you know, like yeah. it's literally like a mother who has a baby, and it's like, oh, isn't he so perfect? And the kids running around, little fucking chubby bastard yeah. with chocolate all over its face and yeah, pissing its yeah, nose. Yeah. It's like it's not the perfect child, but I suppose it's it's your child, so we have to praise it. That's kind <laughs> yeah, of like yeah, what yeah. people are like with the football clubs. Do you feel me, though, Saeed? And that's no, why I, 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 you know, the other day I suggested either, right? For being yo is getting older or he's had a long-term injury that he's had to play through because of the lack of squad depth. Either way, the conclusion there is get more squad depth. Otherwise, yeah. if we don't, stop going into seasons and thinking we're going to compete with City and compete with Real Madrid in the Champions League because we've yeah. been proven that we're the second best in both of them departments. Every yeah. single time we got there with Real, we got beat by Real. Every time we got there with City, we got beat by, uh, by City. So I don't understand... Why people can't comprehend, okay, maybe we just have to readjust the expectations to a top four team. What I hate is the contradiction. I hate Can the way you, you want to win the league. You want to win the league, but you want to keep Fabinho for the next three to four seasons. Yeah, I, exactly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even mind keeping Fabinho, but get someone in who's going to replace yeah. him when he's not playing well. Because do you think Real Madrid persists with Casemiro for 10 games performing below par? Are you no, high? They, they, they go with, yeah, exactly. The thing is, it's though, not going to happen. There, though, what you said there, though, about expectation of top four, like, this is the thing as well. Liverpool, can Liverpool fans take that knowing that they're just a top four team? Knowing that what you've mm. kind of built this credibility for chasing yeah, City for, for, for a couple of years, would they do that? I I, I like the way that you're playing Devers Advocate. The, the question I'd ask you, if that was a Liverpool fan asking me that question, what do you, what do, you do about the cost of living crisis? You just deal with it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you do. And you, you, and you, and you, and you keep it, doing yeah. what you, you keep doing yeah. what you've been doing. You, you keep trying to survive. Improve. Exactly, yeah. but you readjust expectations. Okay, so I've been spending this much recently, and now I can't yeah. spend that much because of the cost of living crisis. Yeah, yeah. What do you have to do, Saeed? What's the key word I've been using? Readjust. Readjust yeah. the expectations. Readjust the the way that you analyse things, mm. and then believe me, the fam. The, and do you want me to tell you why I'm trying to readjust expectations, Saeed? Because I love yeah. my manager. I, I know that people will say that he's overrated. One Premier, I don't give two shiny shit. I wouldn't yeah, have yeah. seen. He means a lot one, to you. Yeah, I course. wouldn't have seen one Premier League in my lifetime to this point. Yeah. If it for Jürgen Klopp, would you agree yeah, with that true. statement? No, 100%. So, I, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Would you also agree with the statement that Jürgen Klopp is of the best interest for Liverpool in the short term and the course. long term? I, for, but for, I also with agree. The circumstances where it's set. Yeah, absolutely. But I also agree it's got to the point now where we need a bit of robustness from Jürgen Klopp as well to take... You no, know, of course, got holes in his good. game, but you wouldn't yes. suggest letting him go or anything like no, that. No, 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 100%. Def he needs... He needs, he needs I think he's deserved the respect to at least have a rebuild or at least be in charge of 100%. He's earned that respect. Look, don't don't get wrong. There's always going to be that banter online, one Premier League yep. trophy. You try to compare it to Fergie. But he does deserve to kind of be given the money to spend. And if 
you find out that results are not going your way, then then and then and then and only then you can have a conversation. Well, is it going to now? Is it time to kind of move on? But he definitely deserves at least you know the a point? window or two to kind of get it right. Hundred percent. And do you know the do you know the point I'm leading to towards there, Saeed, is you you've seen it probably with some of your good managers. I'm not well, not saying Alex particularly, but say if there was yeah. a manager you invested into, it'll probably happen with Ten Hag if he gets a bad spell. So you people analyze just the right here and right now. And the way I see it is Liverpool fans at this moment are fully behind Klopp. But I'm I'm going at the owners. But the thing is, we're yeah. not going to get rid of the owners because guess what, Saeed? It's their football club. They're not going to go anywhere. They don't have to go anywhere. You'll know something about that. The players, yeah. we can't get rid of the players so because they're, they're the biggest assets to the football club. It's not just as yeah. easy as getting them out the door. So who does it fall down to, Saeed, when shit, if shit is still going wrong through lack of investment in the next year or two, who does it fall down to? Yeah, you know what I think? that brings it back. That brings it back to why I'm yeah. trying to readjust expectations. So while we see this level of investment, there and only there, we will we will align with the manager and align with what we should actually be achieving, opposed to what we want to. It's logic over emotion, and people need to recognise that that is the true thing that us Liverpool fans will live a much happier life if we follow. I weren't happy with the Napoli game in, in, as a whole, but from yeah. what I've been seeing, I've been like boss. I mean, we, yeah, were, we, were, we, were great, we were great today in comparison to what I've shown. And that's and managing that's expectations. Seen. Exactly, yeah. brother. And even though rivals will be like, oh, you're lowering the standards. No, I'm readjusting the standards to benefit us more in the long term. Because if people do turn on Klopp and we lose Jürgen Klopp because people do yeah. that, because they didn't readjust their expectations, we're fucked. Not only now, but in yeah. the long term. So, say, do you feel me, brother? Or am I just oh, chatting to you? You know what? No, 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 you, I, I think you're speaking facts and I think you're speaking of logic because, again, emotions can get the better of you. You'd be like, you know, but no, we're Liverpool. We've been we've been competing with Man City. Why can't we do it? You know, all we need is this and that. And I think for me, you know, there's 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 also the ugly side of when Jurgen Klopp goes, you don't have that stability and you've got to only look at our manager. When he went and that stability that was created, don't get me wrong, it's not to the extent of Alex Ferguson, but it is for Liverpool's recent history because yeah. before Liverpool, before Jurgen Klopp, you guys had, what, Hodgson, um, you know, Rodgers, you had so many managers that just yeah. failed and, and came in. Obviously, Benitez won the Champions League and he, he deserves the respect, but after yeah. that, there was a bit of a chop and change. Nah, was. Kenny I feel like, as well. Exactly, Kenny Daglish as well. I feel like Liverpool have got to manage the situation right now and it's up to the fan base as well. Where do you take your energy? You've got to take your energy to FSG and not to Jurgen Klopp. The, when, when you have the energy towards FSG, then you'll start to see that maybe the pressure and the fan rise and whatnot, then you'll see a lead to investment. And then you'll see the club thinking, right, the fans are not happy here. They want investment. They want a plan. They want an idea. They want recruitment. And then only then will you start to see a, a new cycle in, in, in Liverpool's kind of history. But mm. like I said, for now, it's about managing expectations. Because right now, I, I'll be honest with you, man. I, I did say on this channel, I don't think Liverpool will make top four this season. And I still believe it. I still think there's a lot to do. Even if this January transfer window it's very, very difficult to go in that market and go and get the players you want because then you've got to pay a premium. And Liverpool at this minute don't want to pay a premium. They want to go on yeah. a certain level and it's, that's it. They don't go where, above the day. Where, where do you think Liverpool will finish precisely? And what teams do you think will finish above them? I think you'll finish... See, I'm going to say fifth or sixth. But I feel like for me, it's Chelsea or, or Liverpool for fifth or sixth. I, I, I just look at Liverpool... And I'm like, can they go on that 10? If they were to go on that 10, 15 on beating run and I felt like they could do it, I'll be honest with you. I'm like, I'm not sure we could get top four. But right now, I just can't see Liverpool winning three or four games at the minute. It's like one, two, and then it's like, boom, you have a stumbling block now. And I think teams can get at Liverpool now. There's weaknesses in your team. There's deficiencies in your team. That's the key word for me. And what I do you think the main Liverpool... weaknesses are at the moment? I think midfield. Midfield, man. Honestly, when I look at that midfield now and I see... Don't get me wrong. I think Harvey Elliott is a young kid and I think he's going to be a top, top player. Don't get me wrong. Cavalio, young kid. Needs but assistance. Again, you need assistance. Henderson hasn't got the legs anymore. Fabinho. Oh, my God. I rated, I rated Fabinho. And, and I think he's been a top player for Liverpool. But again, his legs have gone. Thiago, wonderful player, but can he be relied upon? Midfield yeah. is where the game is won and lost. Midfield is where everything sets the tempo in. Now the Premier League, you're starting to see the development of, of, of teams now. Teams have got better midfielders than Liverpool. Like, how is that happening? Don't yeah. get me wrong, Wolves are bad, yeah? But look at Wolves' midfield. Neves, uh, what's it called? Nunes and, and Matinho. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you yeah. now, Wolves are cool. 
teams will take that midfield. And that's what will I, I am telling you now, especially Nunes and Neves, we would 100% take both of those midfielders, in our, midfielders in our team. We would. You see what and I mean, you, though? You, Saeed, you're bang on, lad, and you're just regurgitating everything that I've been saying, which is interesting because this is where people are like, yeah. oh, James, you're, you're, you're going on a lot of United fans' channels. I'm not asked. I'm, I'm happy to speak to the opposing view. I'm happy to speak to the opposition to try and come to a common ground to maybe, okay, if I look at it from their perspective, then maybe we yeah. can come to a conclusion with our problem much, much sooner because they don't have the emotional attachment to our football club. It's like when I was criticising United and I probably clocked it slightly sooner than most of the United fans. It's because yeah. you don't have that emotional attachment, but I still you know analyse the game and whatnot as well. Sorry to cut you off, but I feel like for me, you know when you speak to the same people all the time and you don't have a, a kind of a third-party involvement and you always need that next person to kind of bring a fresh idea. I think with Liverpool fans, maybe within your fan base... Everyone's just kind of be like, you know what? Let's let's just keep it in house. Let's just we'll figure it out. And that's probably the yeah. worst thing you could probably do when you want to have make a plan or whatnot. You can't just say we're going to figure it out. You have to have a plan and then execute it. And I feel like when you when we get in these kind of like you know from my perspective, the Liverpool fans can maybe like understand that you know what we are in trouble because Man United now on the ten hours they're trying to do a recruitment system for him and tailor made it for him. Right now, where's that plan for Liverpool? And this is this is why you know you're kind of frustrated because you're you're thinking, where is the plan? What are we doing? Like, where are we trying to go? Is it, are we top four? Are we trying to get into back into this title race? What's going on? Because you know it can easily shit down, and you could be it could become mediocrity again because it's been like that for Liverpool for a while until Jurgen Klopp came. So it can yeah. happen again. So in, it's one of them. The, man. It's, it's very very worrying times. If I was Liverpool, it is worrying times. Like you can't yeah. I, I think carpet. I you think can't. we will get back. I think we will get back to a top four team. I'm not. I, I'm very unsure if it will be this season, just because of the injuries. Say the injuries is the yeah. one that concerns me. When one comes back, who's then going to get injured next? And the whole other conversation of our oh, the medical team and the doctor. Forget it. Either way, I don't believe we're going to have a consistently fit, fit squad for the rest of the season. And I also don't think we prepared enough in the summer to prepare for that. But the best players that I've seen has been Kanate, has been Shimakas, has been Harvey, has been Fabio Carvalho, yeah. has been Jota when he's played the only one who's like a sort of yeah. old school player who's done well is Firmino like Salah Firmino, yeah, he yeah. hasn't hit the standards but he's still getting numbers and still you know numbers, I, yeah, yeah. so when you think about it from that perspective besides Firmino and Salah Firmino's kind of overachieving Salah underachieving but still getting numbers everyone else very yeah. very below par oh and Alisson forgot to say Alisson as well but yeah, one Alisson's thing that you'll notice yeah. there Saeed is when Kanate gets more first team involvement which he hasn't had recently he's all these players, Car Carvalho, Harvey, with the new midfielder, whoever that midfielder may or may not be in the future. Yeah. Either way, I just think, I don't think this is as dark as a period that we're going into as people may suggest. Now, is mm. it is it league titles? That's where I get a little bit dicey. But I don't think yeah. we get to the point of Manchester United to finish finishing sixth and seventh most seasons. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I 100%. Very fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think because you've got Jurgen Klopp's stability right now, and there's no kind of like need to sack him. You've got, you've still got a top class manager. With our yeah. one, we kind of went with David Moyes, and then the recruitment level went down, and then it was kind of rebuilding, and then we kind of chopping and changing. I think right now the fact that you've got Jurgen Klopp it is a comfort blanket. It is a, it is a sign of you know what? It's not going to become shit, shit. You know what I mean? But I just think yeah. for expectation of what Liverpool are, it will become maybe a top four battle over the next few seasons. But now you've got to understand that you've got to compete and spend because United will spend. Look at Chelsea will spend. You've got Tottenham in there. When have you ever seen this? Like the traditional top four was Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, and Liverpool. That was the traditional top four. Now you've got subplots now. You've got, and uh, what do you call it? Obviously, now you've got um, Chelsea. Newcastle. In them. You've got so many. Newcastle. Like Newcastle's even entering. Yeah, man. Yeah, Newcastle's entering. And, and listen, I'm not kidding you, man. Newcastle are going to come around the corner and they're going to they're gonna try and want to compete because they've got the money. And they're doing it in a slow pace, don't get me wrong. I thought they would go in steam ahead, but they're going in there slowly and slowly and they might then disrupt the party. So then what are you gonna, guys going to do? Because they're going to be competing for the same players. You're going to compete I said, for. I said, you know Newcastle will, I said Newcastle will win the league before Liverpool. Um, I genuinely believe oh. that as well. I did. I said Newcastle will win the league next before Liverpool. I think they, they've got added bonus, Ooh. lad. They just want to flex. They just want to flex, lad. Like, so that means uh, that's what... you don't think Liverpool are going to win the, the league title 
when I don't think Newcastle are going to win the league, win the league title within I, the next Bro, I don't think we should years. have won a league. I, well, actually, that's a lie. I think in any other era, we have three Premier League titles. But based on the era that we were put in, which we've got to deal with those very circumstances, we shouldn't even have one league title. We massively overachieved. And as much as I could keep banging on about Liverpool and what we could and couldn't have done, right now, you're just right, Saeed. Yeah. We're not good enough. And I, and genuinely, I do believe him. Um, Newcastle yeah. could, yeah. I, I was going to lead on to Man United because leading from one side of management and control of a football club to another, you seem to be rising very slowly from yeah. the death. Uh, it's a weird one with United because you're doing so much better. I've said it, you're much more cohesive, yeah. compact, sound, like decent, like way better football than what you were seeing. And the results yeah. are coming along with it. Um, what's your perception of the team, the manager, the vibe of the club? Because uh, you look like a happy bunny lad. I can't, man. You, you've seen me in it. I've been in the trenches with United, man. Like, it's been a hard couple of years, man. Um, mm. I think I, I was probably at my peakest and my lowest under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because I felt like the club was using a legend of the football club as a kind of a bait to kind of say, look, we're back, we're United. It feels like Fergie when it never really mm. felt like that. And I feel like for me now, we've got Ten Hag. He knows what he's doing. He's very, very firm about his approach. He came in and said, listen era's come to an end. And all of a sudden, Liverpool are crumbling. I, I don't know if this guy's mystic. Ten that's, hard, but... that's like, that's. That, I don't think that's like proper <laughs> math. I don't, I don't, I don't. As much as it does rattle Listen, me a bit at the time and was perfect. I, I, it was crazy though, isn't it? Listen, we, we will see. That that time will be uh, a judgment on that one. Well, it, was, it, was, it was kind of captain obvious, is what I'm trying to say. Obviously, it's yeah. only just come to an end. Go on, go on. Well, there you go. Hard. Well, there you I'm go. I'm trying to be smart. Is. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like, you know what it is, though? I feel like he just come in and just gave us that stability. And he's actually felt like, you know, I'm in charge. Look at the way he's dealt with Ronaldo. Look at how he's dealt with certain players that have been shit for the past couple of years. I said, right, if you don't work, you're not in this team. And I feel like what is brought to United is accountability. We've not had that. On the one going to associate, it was like, yeah, just do whatever you want. Mourinho, he was kind of like, <laughs> the, the, like the almost evil dad. And he was like, yo, you guys are going to be suffering and whatnot. There was no kind of togetherness. Right now, we're playing for the manager. You can see it. We've got Warriors in the team. We've got this, this South American contingent now, which everyone's fallen in love with because it's like, they actually want it. Like, it, it, and, and, it, and it kind of has gone into the fan base. When you go to the ground now, like, Everybody's up for the game. I'll be honest with you. Last couple of years, it's been flat. Like Old Trafford's been, it's been, it's been a library. It's it's not been great. The atmosphere, and I feel like for me right now, United are going places that I don't think I would have seen so soon in terms of. I just feel like we've got an ethos with our manager. Like there's there's results here. You can go and get ten results and whatnot. And you'd be like, oh, you're on this illusion that you're going somewhere, but in, ra in reality, you're not. I feel like right now with, with what the manager's doing. There's, there's gonna there's gonna be setbacks, don't get me wrong, ups and downs, but I feel like we've got a manager that we can believe in now. If you, you get what I mean, James, we've got a manager we can we can actually believe and say, right, we know this manager is a long-term manager. If the club, and I mean it's a big if, they can back him properly. And I don't mean the way we've just spent now, and people say, oh, 200 million. I mean over a sustained amount of time, properly in a way that's strategic, in a way that's not just buying any old player that suits his philosophy. I thought out, what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. And thought out, then I feel like for me, United can progress quicker because Ralph Franklin said it doesn't have to take five or ten years that like people are saying. It needs yeah. to take over two or three windows, two or three, you know, good windows, and then my United can look towards becoming a team that can at least compete and, and compete in a way might not be for trophies necessarily soon, but compete the way that, bro, we were getting beat 5-0 by you lot. And bro, the worst day of my life. 9-0 like on was, that. Get it, get it on we that. that, that it, it, well, listen, don't, you don't have to repeat it on here, you know what I mean? But it, we didn't compete. Hey, listen, lads, I'm going back to the good old times. What do you mean? And that was a year ago, This like literally a year ago this, this week. And that's why it's kind of crazy to think that, you know, all I want is for my United to compete. That's, that's, the, that's the kind of small... Do you know how I know it's working? Do you know how yeah, I know it's on. working for United at the moment as well? Is that all the new signings have been the best players? So, Lissandro Martinez being arguably the best centre-back in the league so far. I think um, Ericsson has been fantastic in the midfield as well. Yeah. And I think these elements of, uh, you know, Anthony, I think regardless what people want to say, I think he does his moments. I think he's going to settle into the team very well. Uh, Rashford's yeah. found a new lease of form, which is which is good for yeah. him. And I still question his ability as an actual footballer, but as a goal scorer, it's undisputed what he can do, 100 goals for the club. But there is one player, so 
tired. I'm not here to agree with you the whole time, lad. Uh, I had a debate with Rance the other day. He got very salty over his star boy, Sanch. I said to him, um, Darwin Nunes yeah. has had more of an impact for Liverpool than what Sancho has had in a season longer for Manchester United. Is this a statement that you would agree with? Because Rance certainly didn't. You know what it is? I, I don't think... It's very, very difficult to assess both of them. One is there to score goals. One has to be there to create. Um, obviously, all to score Said. goals. But I think they have... Now, honestly, I genuinely seen that. think they have different you know what roles. that is? No, wait there, Said. Do you know what that is? It's, it's a plaster. So, do you know what i just done? You rip it off. Just admit, the signing has not been great to this point. He's been a bit meaty and he's probably not going to fulfil... A success, a successful Manchester United. No, no, I, I, I don't, like I don't, this. I disagree with that. I think for me, people. If he keeps going like this, flat. you know, you know, people have got to give him. He came under a manager at Oligan Solskjaer, then he was sacked, and we had Ralph Franklin for the rest of the season. He's not had stability. He's had the first manager now that actually can believe in him. This is going to be Sancho's season, and I think for me, this is a season where people can fully, fully judge him. You might say, well, he should be banking in first season, and I understand that, but last season there wasn't much stability. This season, there's a lot of stability. There's a manager, there's a coach, there's a guy who has a philosophy. He has to perform this season. I won't, at the end of this season, I'm telling you right now, I will not give any excuses to Sancho. But for me, I want to see what he could do under this manager. And yes, it's the 3rd of November. And yes, he hasn't performed still this season. But I'm still happy with his progress. I'm still happy with what he's trying to do. Don't get me wrong. We're not going to get the German Sancho. This is what people don't, don't realise. That's a different league. He has to adapt. Right now, he's struggling to adapt, but he's trying to find his feet. And there's another thing that I want to mention. I still believe he hasn't played with an actual number nine. Like a lot of people will say, you're talking nonsense. He's played with Ronaldo. I'm sorry, Ronaldo's not going to tailor towards what he does. He hasn't played with Martial or he played with him in one, with one preseason. And that's about it. Rashford up front. His game relies on one to one link up play, a lot of feeding off other people, you know what I mean? Interchange, little combinations, transitions. And that's basically part of his game. We've seen it with Haaland. He hasn't had that on my United. But don't get me wrong, that's a lot of excuses that I've made for him. But in terms of his own performances, he needs to do better. He needs to give us more. It's as simple as that. He needs to give us more. And he needs to start improving. And it's as simple as that. There's no one right now saying, oh, Sancho will... Da, da, da. He has to now give us the answers. We've kind of given him the backing and everything like that. And we still will do. But he has to now say to us, right, I've, I've let you down, guys. And, and you know what? I haven't given you the full amount of money. And I haven't given you the full 70 do you know million what worth. Saeed, right now, do you know what, though, Saeed? I think he's genuinely tried. And I, I think he's got all the ability in the world. When he joined Man United, I thought he was going to be a great sign. And the first thing I've recognised fairly quick is the how much he's just not great in space. Like, when, or when he's got... like. When he has to make that quick thinking reaction, taking on players has been something that's been a big underwhelming factor in his game yeah. that I've been seeing recently because that's what I associated him with, being able to create that space to make those chances for the people running into the box. And I have to respectfully disagree. He hasn't had an out-and-out out number nine, but he's had an out-and-out out, uh, outlet, which is exactly what Haaland is. So Haaland is a physical... Oh, come on, quick Ronaldo beat. and Haaland. One sec. No, fuck Ronaldo. Fuck Ronaldo because you've also got Rashford this season. You've got United playing the best football that they played in recent times and Sancho is still struggling massively in my opinion and he scored against us and he put Van Dijk on his heart yeah man I, I get that but on a consistent basis I don't think he's going to have enough to fulfil what is going to be good enough for United if you want to get back to league titles which I assume in a season or two that's exactly what you want to do I don't think he's going to be good enough for that but do you not think though if I was giving you an example would Liverpool be the same in their success without what Firmino did in terms of his underrated ability. Would it, would it be the same success? Do you no, think wouldn't, so? No, it wouldn't, but Firmino m like mastered and specialised in playing in the false nine role and finding the healthy balance of creating space for other people. And this is why I'm talking about with Martial. Players. So, yeah, yeah with Martial, Martial, different player. I thought I, it was almost See, I think, I think for me, with, with Martial and what Firmino does, I think the similar roles in link-up playing. I, feel I thought like we were talking about Sancho. How come no, no, I'm talking about, about, no, no, I'm talking about when when you're when I'm talking about Firmino, what he gives oh, uh, Liverpool yeah. and that underrated feeling. I'm talking about yeah. with Sancho, he's like almost but what 
it what is I know it's that unlocking. I know I, I know what it means kind of like, oh, another player that needs unlocking, but he does provide a lot with what Sancho and Martial do in terms of link up play. And we haven't seen that by United. We've only seen it for one preseason. And this is why mm. I'm saying fans just lay off him and give him that time and that rebuilding process. Obviously, it relies on Martial staying fit, which isn't easy. But I'm, I just want to see that before I give a full judgment. I agree. I think that's Sancho the best approach. I think that's yeah. the best approach. I'm not saying it's it's like yeah. definitely not going to work. I'm telling you what I'm predicting to happen. I think you're going to end up getting better than Sancho, someone who's more suited to your team than what Sancho is as well. And then all round, you'll be better. So do you think, forget you know what, what you think you should do. Yeah, forget what you think you should do. Yeah. Do you think he will? reach the heights of a standard that's going to be good enough for United to be competing for leagues year in, year out. Because regardless, and the point I was making before, Dead Quick, before I let you go, Saeed, is Hallands is an outlet, Rashford is an outlet. The both players who find positions and the both players who, whoever you think's better, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They're very similar in the way that they play. Do you get what I'm saying? Nunes is, yeah, yeah. again, very similar type of player, just very much let's find space. So when you've got these similar players and Sancho still isn't thriving, do you think he will end up thriving? Is the question I'm asking. You know what? I'm, I'll be honest with you. I can't give you an answer. I, I'm I saying, think... no, I, I people tune you know in. People tune to YouTube shows, so we're not doing all the managerial bullshit. You know like, is? oh, we're just, we're just so. focusing on the next you game. Know what? You know what? I'm going to PR side. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed in you. PR I believe so. I believe so. I believe. Just waiting for the Sancho, Sancho interview. Will come. <laughs> I, you know what? I believe Sancho will come good. I don't. Like, I'm, I'm not saying I will. It will happen. I believe it will. In, in that, if that makes sense, I, it, basically, it's a fence. But I've, I've got positive feelings about Sancho, <laughs> and we can have, the, we can have a full, full debate where you can absolutely slaughter Sancho if Martial comes in his team. And if we buy a striker in January, and then Sancho's just a lot of ifs for me. Okay, so to Listen, accommodate for Sancho, you, we need Martial to come that. in. You wait there, Saeed. Wait there, wait there, wait there. You said it. You said it, man. <laughs> <laughs> you Saeed, you just that. said to me, so the way that Sancho's boss is, if we get Martial in, and if Ten Hag just finds the right little emotional attachment with Sancho, and if we get the main strike, and if we get... And, yeah. and, uh, the, 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 oh, my name is Saeed, and I like to make excuses for <laughs> Sancho. You United fans, I promise you, I'm doing it for your benefit. I've done it for you when you were shit. I'm doing it. I'm giving no, you pointers man. as a Liverpool fan to how to run give, your football give club. Give time, man. You give are a the comment... season, man. That's all I'm saying to you people. You might be fully right. That might bring out the best in Sancho. Oh, believe me, I'm sure if you were accommodated enough to myself, I would look like a very bang average <laughs> Premier League player, which would be very higher level than what my football ability actually is. I like Sancho, I just don't think the Premier League's cut out for him. I think you're trying to accommodate too much that to make him successful. You that, and it financially, you financially, you don't have to have him. You can get it's someone else. Who, there is always another Sancho, my brother. There is always I another know, I Sancho. Get that. And you know what? There's one thing I want to, two points I want to make. That hurts me because it's two years we've been chasing him, and for us to kind of be talking about Sancho, we're probably not quite in the Premier League. Fair. Two years that hurts, and then the second bit is, you know what? If the manager replaces him and he brings another player in, I don't think I have that emotional attachment. We move, like we move. I, I, I know it, it, it sounds like you know I'm not backing Sancho, but you know what? We move in it. Like the manager don't rate him, the manager All wants to bring someone else in. If, if, Sancho was at, if, Sa if Sancho was at Real Madrid, if he was at Real Madrid doing this, I'd give him the rest of the season. If he's at Real Madrid... So, Saeed, this is where I'm talking to you about like the Man United expectations in a couple of seasons. Because with okay. what he's doing now, it's not going to compare to that. So, if he was at Real Madrid, are they persistent with this shit? Um, I think, I like think they, they'll uh, be uh, absolute screw. They'll be the white flags right now. They'll be the white yeah. flags. Yeah. They'll be the white flags. Yeah. Proper heavy shit, lad. Like, really heavy shit. They'll be the white and it's flags. not ideal that footballers don't get the time. But at the top of the game, you don't have time. Time is money. Time is trophies. That is what football correlates to when you talk about time. And regardless, Sancho might be great for Dortmund. Well, class, in fact. But for Manchester yeah. United, it just might not suit him. We're going into a very system-based game. And if you're accommodating too much, is that yeah. just too much work for one player to work out? And we've known from previous experiences, different yeah. but similar. If you get like Ronaldo in the team, just to accommodate to Ronaldo, it affects somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is, though? There's one thing about Ten Hag, though. I just don't think he's, 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 got, he's got the kind of image in the face of, yo, listen, if you don't work, I'm bringing on Ilango and I'm bringing on the other players in. So right now... If Sancho, that's what I keep saying. Like, I don't really have the, 
amount of pressure. You know what I mean? I want him to succeed, obviously. But it's, he has to prove it to me. Like, he has to prove it to the fans. Yeah, man. Step yeah, up. Man. Step up. You know? Maybe it's the fear factor of being in the line like Man United. That's Dortmund. He, he was being talked about, but it was in a, such a positive way, confidence yeah. way. Like, like sincere love from the fact. Like, I'm not saying you don't sincerely love him. I can tell by the way you're fucking defending him over fuck yeah. all that he's done on the pitch. I know you exactly. love him. Exactly. Um, <laughs> It's just, and I know you want it to work out. I, I I'm the same for every player that comes in. They're like a young winger, and you're like, yeah, he's good. I want him to do well. Like if Luis Diaz didn't end up working out, I'll be like, that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, it's just yeah. the impact has been so little. It's very hard for us to even work off the base that Sancho has created for himself. Uh, but I didn't want to just lay into Sancho. It's I, I just like debates, and I seem yeah, to yeah. disagree on a lot of points of views that Man United fans have about Sancho, but I think it's just boss to have a discussion, Saeed, and I think that nah, was... No, it's good, man. I mean, this is what it's all about, well. man. Different opinions, different um, ways of thinking about football, and, you know what I mean? If we could do it in a respectful way, that's what all that matters, isn't it? You know what I mean? That's how you debate, Saeed. That's how everyone that's in the it. comments take exactly. notes. Exactly. Take notes. Exactly. Um, Saeed, notes, I was going to... I was going to ask you about your your Europa League clash tonight, and I was going to ask if you could touch on the Premier League game that you've got at the weekend, whoever that may yeah, be Yeah, yeah, of course. We, so basically tonight we're playing Real Sociedad and we need to win by two clear goals to go top of the group. Similar to where you Ooh. needed one more goal to beat um, Napoli or two more goals. We, needed, I don't know what we it was. needed two, yeah. We would have needed two, two. Yeah, yeah. So we need to win by two clear goals tonight, which I'll be honest with you, I don't think we'll do it because I feel like we won't have the same intensity to do it, you know what I mean? Because we've been playing a lot of games. So yeah. I don't think it will happen. Don't get me wrong. I'd love it to happen. But I'll be honest with you, man. You know what? Bring bring them on. Barcelona, Juventus. Who, who else is out there? Ajax, what? they're not great. I, not I great, would man. love... If you, if you do a watch-along for the away Barcelona game, I'd love to be on that watch-along with you. I'd yeah. love to be. You're welcome. Like, if it, the you away Barcelona the... game, I'll be there. Well, listen. Let's have them, man. I don't think they're great. I think we can have them. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've looked at them in the in the in the in the, in the Champions League, in the La Liga as well. I think they've got deficiencies in their in their side. I think you know what? You, if you want, do you not still have deficiencies, Tom? Because they're we, not we perfect, do. but you're not perfect either. They're kind but, of going you know like like in a steady transition. You are still on your way up. Where does it meet? Are you above them now? Are they above you still? In your I still, think, or is it? I don't fear them. The bottom line is, I don't fear them. I okay. don't think it's the same Barcelona. I don't think it's the same Juventus. So yeah. let's if, they, if right. we do go through, right. there's not a kind of feeling of shit, man. We're playing these lot. You know, what I mean, let's have them in it. Um, so that's that. And in terms of the Premier League game, we've got um, Aston Villa away, which I'm not gonna lie to you. On paper, it seems like a they all buzzing that they haven't got Steven Gerrard now. You're not saying like you're coming well, to a motivated Aston Villa Steven team. Gerrard, like, yes, yeah. fuck Steven Gerrard. We're beating everyone uh, now. They played well. But they played well. In they played game. well. They, 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 they lost the last game, but I feel like this game now, Unai Emery's first game, and you know what happens in the first game, man. The crowd is buzzing. It's bouncing. Is it Unai Unai's Emery. first game? I think it is, you know, because he signed. Ooh. He had the T-shirt yesterday. He had the T-shirt on... Um, you know the T-shirt that you basically show. I when thought he's already he, managed. Oh, hey, that's interesting. No, he didn't. He didn't. He, didn't, he wasn't managing the last game. Um, yesterday he had his official official unveiling, so he will probably be managing to on this game or Sunday. And that's my only fear, and that's why I don't think it's going to be as convincing as we say it is. It could be a draw, but I've got the feeling we'll lick a win because I just feel like first game manager bounce. You're always going to get a. <laughs> The expected levels just go up yeah. from the team. Everybody wants oh. to try for the manager. Everyone wants to make an impression. So, you know, we've got to be on guard. We're playing on Thursday. They're having a fresh full week. It does a lot, man. It does a lot. West Ham, we're, we're, we're far better, the better team in the second half. And we, we struggled because of the match area intensity because they rested all their players. So we've got to manage it. Last couple of weeks, we need to get most, maximum points because I don't want Liverpool winning against Tottenham. And I don't want... Any gaps kind of get clawing back up. Let's keep the the gap, you know, even more if we can, and then we can just push on. So, yeah, man, it's gonna be interesting, man. Interesting game. This, this have you got a score United. prediction for both of them? Two, two, I'm gonna go for tonight. I'm gonna go for we win two one. I don't think we're gonna win three one, four one, or whatever. You know, what I mean, I think we'll win two one. Real yeah. Sociedad have been decent this season, and um, on the weekend again, two one again. I'm gonna go for two one. I think we lick it. We lick it. You know what I mean? On the weekend, yeah. So, it's yeah. going to be interesting to see how you set up tonight because you need two goals to win, which would make me lead to believe that you'd probably go with your strongest team. But it depends how much Ten Hag gives a fuck about finishing top exactly. and second. Um, I think exactly. the I think the way you approach it is just start strong enough tonight to win it. You're already through, aren't you? 
Yeah, we're already through. Oh, I think you just rotate and just focus fully on the game yeah. on the weekends. Uh, That's what I, I would do, do. You know what I mean? Just do that. And I think the correlation of finishing first and seconds and whatnot is just mess. So especially you take Barcelona and all that. Yeah, exactly. especially in the Europa League. I think in the Champions League, you know what I mean? It's one of them because PSG have now fallen into that second and then you're facing one of them. But I feel like for us, it's kind of Europa League. It, you shouldn't be, you know what I mean? It shouldn't, it shouldn't be too tough. Like the first guys who have finished on top, you know, in the, in, the, in the Europa League, they're not going to be the greatest of quality. So let's just see it. It is what it is, isn't it? To play the best, you've got to beat the best, isn't it? So have you, can, have, have you seen the team teams that we can get? We, we can get Benfica, Porto, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. So all the storylines there is either Nunes goes back to Benfica, Diaz goes back to Porto, Mane comes back to Liverpool or we play Real Madrid. Who I can't Ooh. even remember us beating them in the Champions League in recent years. I think for me that Manny story would be beautiful. Obviously for you as well, but imagine that like, back, like already coming back like Manny. I'd Manny. be screaming. How weird would it be seeing Manny against Trent? Oh lad! Oh That'd be man! Serious. He'd be like, like, I what know what to fuck? do. And by the yeah. way, what is Trent doing there? What is Trent doing with speed, man? Is he is he all right, man? Like, what is he doing, like? On, oh, on do you know what, speed? lad? What did you think about the thing with speed? We'll talk about that, Trent Alexander Arnold and speed. Ah, right, here's my perception on it. Right, I love on, speed. I think he, I think he's a fucking oh, belter. And guy. you know as yeah, well, yeah. I like the way he collaborates with footballers, and footballers just know his little shtick. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Of course. I think Trent was just doing what every other footballer had done. And I'm not going to lie, I thought speed just took it a little bit far, but that's why I found it funny. I think other people saw it in a bit of a different light. I just think it's one of those. I didn't hear the Liverpool perspective. What, what's the Liverpool perspective online like? You know, I, I know the oh, football okay. be a bit too much. Everyone, what's the Liverpool perspective? Does everyone find it funny from what you've seen? I think a lot of people are just kind of be like, oh, he's telling Trent to defend, but he's trying to do it in a funny way. He was like, defend, 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 defend. Yeah, so you know, exactly. In a funny way. Yeah, it was, and that's why I can appreciate like heart of banter. Um, and Trent didn't look like he was taking it the best. He kind of looked a little bit awkward and whatnot. I'll, uh, I know. If but this why goes put out yourself in a... that situation? I, I know. It, I get it. He wants to collaborate, but then why put yourself in that situation when you're I not, don't think it's a you're bad thing. Them. Yeah, Saeed, it's one of them. I think it's one of them. If, if you know, it's like Lingard when he went and spoke to Speed the other day. It's just a random yeah. thing that people can do. If Fonzie Davies can do it and Lingard can do it and uh, Al- yeah, Alanga yeah. can do it, then why can't Trent do it? It's not. Yeah. An, yeah, 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 it's yeah, not yeah. supposed to be something that's awkward. Yes, you can anticipate him calling them out to defend them, but I don't yeah, think yeah. that's. Sort of it's been set out that way. You know how these things work, Saeed. One yeah, person speaks to another, one connects speaks to another. So you, all these people who are in the middle of these two finally meeting together aren't going to be discussing about like, oh, but what if Speed said? It? No one cares about that. So I don't blame yeah. Trent at all for the situation. I thought, mm. I, I don't, we're talking about it like something really bad happens. It was just a bit of like yeah. harder banter from a exactly. top-class content creator and a top-class right-back who has defensive it's issues. Show, yeah, it just goes to show how, how massive social media is, how fast it gets out there, how it gets people talking about it. I feel like it's just yeah. a talking point and then tomorrow we've all forgotten about it. Like, you know, it's just one of them like, 100%. You know? But big up to speed, big up to Trent big Alexander up, Arnold, the best right back in the world by far. Something that means you uh, can both agree on. Yeah. Saeed, we'll that you know the that score. One. Last thing before I let you go, my brother. Um, yeah. Jude Bellingham being doing the rounds. He's been linked yeah. with all the biggest clubs because rightly so. Uh, he's be- I've, Basically, the way I've seen it is that Liverpool and FSG have agreed £100 million to spend on Jude Bellingham. Tell me how it's mad, Saeed, that we're agreeing to spend £100 million on Jude Bellingham when he's being priced at mad. 130 Imagine me. Imagine you oh. buying a prime for a fiver. Right, a fiver. No, say you bought three primes for a fiver and you wanted to sell them for a fiver. Each and I came to you and said, no, Saeed, I want it for two fifty. How much of an irrelevant, po- how much of an yeah, irrelevant pro- pro- proposal is that? It, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, so yeah, now I, so yeah. we're looking at Jude, who's the prime in this case, and saying, "Come on, we'll pay, we'll pay two fifty for him, but we're not going to pay the yeah. fiver." Are you mad? Yeah, it's crazy. And this is this is again. I'll be honest with you, man. I don't think Liverpool should go and spend hundred odd million on Jude Bellingham. On I'll be one real. Player. On one get, like, player, I think for me. I'm looking at the, the the midfielder from Benfica, Enzo Fernandez. Enzo a lot Fernandes. of people you can go and get other players. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying his name to me. Yeah. I need to really look he's into him. Say the Kone, really good. Kone from um, I think he's from Borussia. Kone, yeah. Kuda Kone. He's another one that everyone's going to be looking at. I mm. think for me, Liverpool should go in that route rather than spend it all in one go. 
Uh, you're saying, you're saying, you, what you're saying, Saeed, is do what you've been doing. Keep buying good players, but they're not the superstar players. Buy multiple in one position, the same way you bought Genie, the same way you bought Mane. Then over time, yeah. you implement it for being your Van Dyke. All you need is five or six just really, really good players and one world class player, and you can there you go. go for it. But again. the thing is, these guys can become world class. Like the Sandra Martinez isn't world class right now, but in a couple of years, and if you I disagree, form, brother. I disagree. I think Lissandro Marti, I think you can see class when it's coming in your face. I think he was absolutely unbelievable at Ajax. I think his passing range is sensational. I think probably besides me, I think their passing style is different. I think when it comes to that sort of inside curling pass um, and the efficiency of how straight it goes, so the sort of short passing to medium yeah, yeah, range yeah, passing, I think uh, Martinez is better. I think the long range, no one touches Virgil in my opinion. No, but, no, no, but yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, just, just in the passing department, he's brilliant. Then defensively, Mon there. Awareness, oh, brilliant positioning, world class. I'm sorry, Saeed, when you've got the intelligence that he has, the only thing that hinders Martinez from becoming a world class centre back is injury. And when I say world class, I mean a long term world class centre back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's already world class now. I am sorry to see United okay. go from the defence that they had to the defence that they do. I'm not even setting you up for school thuggery. I think you should be going on the big six and absolutely screaming to the rooftops. Yeah, yeah. I have been, I've, I've been Martinez. saying we need more respect for Martinez, 100%. And I feel like for me, he will get to that range. And that's why I was giving that comparison is that Jude Bellingham, don't get me wrong, is is is, is going to get to that level. But I just, I'm not sure if Liverpool should be wise enough to kind of do that. I think it's one of them where it's a, it's a media sign. You know when the media kind of portray that you should go and get this player and he's like a Liverpool signing, like... Don't like fall for it and just kind of like go with what. But then again, it is a typical FSG signing though. To get I'd still fans. take him. I, I'd take him yeah, with the knowledge of knowing we're going to improve around. And but like you said, Absolutely. if that's our only player, then yeah, fuck that. There you go. Then that's the thing. You spent all your budget on that. And then you don't get a a so and so player up front or whatever. You kind of need up. It's not the wisest to do. But do you think you'll get? Don't get, get me wrong. People want toys in it. Sorry. Um, I don't think we'll get him. I think we're going to go for more. Enzo Fernandez kind of route, um, uh, you know, maybe Lamar from um, from Leipzig. We're gonna go for them. We're gonna go for them. Them eights. I think uh, we're gonna play maybe two eights and then kind of um, have one holding midfielder. We're gonna go in that route, similar to what Liverpool have done. I think that's where the game's going. I think number tens are dying now. I'm gonna say like you know, if it's gonna at like actual number tens, they're not. Look at the Premier League now, like more eights and then one holding sixes. This is what this is where the Premier League's going. You need combative. Players, you need players that are going to press, you're going to be players that are running, but also have the technical ability. And these guys can do that. So, yeah, you know, and obviously De Jong as well, if we can get him, well, I mean, maybe next summer. <laughs> no, for sure. You know? um, where do you think he will go? Jude Bellingham. I think for me, he'll stay another season at Dortmund. I, I really oh, do. So I think, this one? Yeah. And then next yeah. one? Yeah. Generally. Oh, no, I think you honestly, I think you'll stay. I think you'll stay next summer. I think he's happy developing. He's bro, he's he's just about to turn 19 in February. I think for me, for his development wise, I think it's he'll not stay on that, you know. It's not a bad yeah, show because now so. he's really becoming the main star there. Well, he is the main star there. All I see is his face all over their socials and whatnot anyway. So that's why I'm assuming he's their main star. And then on top of that as well, he's developing Watch out for he's City. Improving. Watch out for City. Yeah, though. that's what I'm thinking. I'm just like, Gundogan goes to Dortmund and then it becomes part of the deal. I generally do think that could happen and he could be a Gundogan replacement. So I'd take fucking Gundogan at Liverpool. Let let him and Tiago take days off each. Right, come on, I'll take yeah. this one, lad. I'll take this one. You know what I mean? Let it let him and Tiago. What a player though, Gundogan, man. What a player. Oh, mate, do you know if we signed him, I think we I think he could have been the difference of us and Pep and us getting one Premier League title and two Premier League titles. I do. I think oh. Gundogan has just always been that good of a player. He proven it against Aston Villa. And the year before, when they last won the league, he was one of the best players in that campaign. So there you go. I don't think it's a bad a bad show from me, to be honest. But Saeed. That's going to be the end of this show, brother. Um, is there anything oh, that you want to let the people at James Redmond TV know about what's going on at your channel and what you've got going on in your life? Yeah, just go find me there, people. Saeed TV, right there, Indeed. people. Um, go follow that. Subscribe to my channel. But not only that, make sure you subscribe to James Redmond TV. Support his channel and he's doing big things, man. You get me trending on YouTube, man. This is the guy. You know that. 
You know who that. You know the Redmond's you know Army is the sickest, lads. The Redmond's yeah, Army is the sickest. Me and me I say that for the sickest because it's a combination of your fan base, Rancis fan base expressions, yeah, and yeah. it all comes together. And we just get a belt of platform where we can make Absolutely. great content for the people. Uh, and if you do want to see more great content, Sai TV, YouTube channel, link in title, another great show, loads of juicy debates that are going to be coming out in clip forms and stuff Come like that on, on my definitely. channel as well. Um, so, yes, yeah, Saeed, thank you for coming on, brother. Give me a spot, Jake. Not anytime. You too, man. Love, man. Mind you, bro. And guys, we will see you all in a bizzle. Peace out.